So that's what I expect from an Albanese government is basically no lot. Um, focus on the wrong areas, um, looking to a future of their utopia um, from the born the rural mentality, not a vision of what Australia should be. You know, taking the big risks, you know, uh, telling the rest of the world to, no, don't just take our raw materials, take the product. Um, from us and that sort of stuff. And, and there's none of that vision uh, in the budget at all. Like I was saying, tonight is the officially Australian federal budget night where they share their revenue and expenditure plans. Um, there's already been a few things coming out, I believe. So I'd like to hear your opinion, Stephen. What are you anticipating and what are you noticing with their plans? Oh, look, Jim, Jim Chalmers has already said that he's going to, you know, channel his, his best Paul Keating. Um, so that pretty much means that um, the, the labour rights you know, the non-contributors to our economy will do the best. Uh, and if you're a small business person, expect to get um, get hammered uh, or have just nothing in it for you. So you won't go forward, won't go backward. Um, but, you know, not, not having any changes means you're going backwards. Um, the, um, we're, we're already seeing how Labor are going to, to operate the country. And it's pretty much um, for their mates and for everyone else, which is what every government does. Uh, but the problem with this is it drives us more and more into a socialistic um, society rather than a society that, that's built on um, on value and value creation. Um, and that's that's the big thing. So we already know that, I'm just trying to look and see if there's any numbers come through. You know, they, they're going to, you know, try and make childcare cheaper and they're trying to make, um, you know, um, uh, uh, what, what's the other one? The other big one they're, they're looking at. Um, uh, oh, w women in the workplace by throwing money at it. And, you know, most of the, the women that we've got employed uh, in our business, it's not the money that, that is, brings them in. It's the flexibility in how they can work. You know, we've, we've got... Um, one of our accounts ladies, she only wants to work between 10 and 2 every day, but she's happy to do it six days a week, uh, right? And and that is, um, that's what she wants. So she can drop the kids off, off to school, you know, come into the office and go and pick up, pick up the kids. Um, and um, I, I think I just saw a comment there that, you know, Sophie was it from Sophie said, you know, I, I chose to, to stay at home. Well, so did, so did my mother. Um, you know, she she was a stay at home home mum, um, and and that a lot of that is um, moral choice and, and family choice. But Labor and, and most governments at the moment they just throw it at the people that are non-productive, um, people that that um, that they can just get under their under their control. Um, the other thing we're going to see is is a further massive slide to this renewables stuff. We're already starting to see it. Um, uh, in in what their um, their liaison liaising with um, in the media uh, with the things like the cable the um, what do they call it the, um, the Mariner cable between um, Tasmania and Victoria two billion dollars or more it's probably going to cost a lot more than that um, in to build these cables between Tasmania and Victoria so they can build wind farms in Tasmania because the Victorians don't want them in their, their state. Well, that doesn't make sense. So you're going to have massive energy losses and, and, and everything now. So it, a lot of this stuff just doesn't make sense. Um, it's just massive handouts. So the other thing is, is it'll be interesting to see. I'm just trying to see what they're talking about. Uh, probably too early. Um, about... Um, uh, the stage three tax cuts, where they're, they're going to ta attach them. And as we've said in previous episodes, the stage three tax cuts aren't about the tax cut. 
They're about stopping bracket creep. They're about stopping, you know, as they're saying about we're going to hammer across the living, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. It's about stopping people moving up into higher and higher tax brackets through, um, you know, all this real wage growth they keep talking about. Well, if you want real wage growth, stop inflation. You know, uh, the government's, once again, government-induced inflation is, is most of the problem. Um, and now we've got a double whammy with the floods again. Uh, we've had three years in a row now of floods that are causing problems with, with supply chain issues, you know, transportation, um, with, with food um, and other bits and pieces, um, you know, not being able to move between the states, um, which just all adds to it. Um, and, um, it, it, you know, it's just, oh, I, I just get wild um, half the time on a lot of the stuff. So. Mm. Yeah. Um, what about Albo? Like, what are your thoughts on him with his, like, knowing how to summon a task force? Does he have actually, like, what are his plans for Australia? Is there much and how does it correlate? Yeah, look, to the la largely, there is no plan. Um, they went to a where well, they went to the election with nothing, um, apart from platitudes saying we're going to fix this, we're going to fix that, and we're going to lower power. And well, they can't do any of that. Um, the um, they're going to fix real wages. Well, the only way to do that is get government out of the system, not put more government into it. Uh, so he has no plan. Uh, if you have a look again, that the summits and task force were a big thing under the Rudd government. And they, into a, to an effect, they're a, a fairly big thing under the, the um, uh, Hawke and Keating government. But at least the Hawke and Keating government actually did reform. They actually had the balls to actually do reform. Um, and if you have a look at the, the difference between the Hawke and Keating, they were pretty much a centre-right government um, in, you know, of, of the time, where now Albo, Chalmers and the like are very green, very left. Uh, so it's all about the social policies. policies. Um, I would love to say that we saw a lot of stuff come out of the summit. Um, there's another task force on renewable energy. There's a task force on manufacturing. Um, these gab fests never do anything. They just put money in the hands of the, the lobbyists um, and, and make big corporations feel good. Um, nothing tangible ever comes out of it. The job summit, nothing's come out of it um, that we didn't already know. Um, you need to put, you know, emphasis into training and education and, you know, and actually skilling people. The, one of the biggest things that happened in this country under John Howard, and um, it was really the wrong way to go at the time, it seemed like the right way, was basically this drive in the Western world that everyone should go to university, that everyone needs a university degree. And basically what, what that does uh, is all it sets people up for is a job in the public service. Uh, because where the real uh, jobs are in the economy are actually not in the university educated positions. Um, they're mechanics, they're electricians, they're tradespeople, they're chefs. Um, you don't go to university for all that. You, a lot of it, you go through trade schools, you go through through vet um, training, you know, um, and and they're the skills now that we've really got trouble with, you know, because you've got all these people out there that think that you know I've got a university degree, well, they can't use it. They're just a very 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 highly skilled bartender, um, and um, and that's even becoming a problem now because bars aren't opening. Um, so and. Um, you know, uni is a big waste of time uh, for a lot of people. Look, if you're going to become a doctor, you're going to become a scientist or someone like that, yeah, yeah, university is great. Um, why go to university to get a political science degree? You know, um, to get an art degree. Why do you need an art degree? Go and work in an art gallery. Um, study history uh, and that sort of stuff. But they, they don't. Um, uh, things like nursing and, and all that sort of stuff now, um, they're really, you know, making it a university degree where it should be made in the hospital. Um, you know, vets and, and all that sort of stuff. A lot of it can be more done um, uh, hand-skilled on. 
and, and that sort of stuff. And, um, and that's one of the things we're launching next year uh, in, in our aviation business, especially is a, a new institute um, of aerospace um, to train the next generation of um, uh, all aerospace uh, related jobs, uh, but from a vet assistant and, and apprenticeship based based thing. That, that's how we're going to fix the economy. Um, the other thing is, is what we need is um, more and more people to fix the economy who are entrepreneurial, who are going to take over businesses and, and, and make them expand. Um, I I'm, I'm, can't remember what the number is now, but out of the top tech billionaires, um, I forget what the number is. It's like 85 or 90% of them are all college dropouts. Uh, the, you know, and when, when I say college, it's not dropping out in year three or something, you know, when you've got six months to go there, they're dropping out what six months after getting in because they're going, well, this is not going to get me my dream. You know, so they're dropping out and following their dream. So that's what we need more of is risk takers. And I think we've said this before is we're now no longer a country of risk takers um, where, where everyone wants the comfortable job. And that's why the bureaucracies are, are growing because people want the safe, secure job. Our budget's going to be the same thing. You know, uh, priority area, here we go, some priority area. Um, 485 million for university placement, just what we don't need. Um, um, but only 180,000 TAFE places. So, you know, they, they're going to spend more money on university places than TAFE places where we actually need the money. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's becoming a joke. Um, you know, electricity prices are still going up. People, they've just said that uh, it'll be um, another twenty percent for the rest of this year and thirty percent for next year. So, so that, so there you go. So your know, your electricity is going to double basically, uh, and uh, that that's the government's own numbers. Yeah, there you go. Just show you the cost of living is going through the roof now. Yeah. And, and look, and the other thing is if, if you're running your own business, uh, you're controlling your own wages. And, um, and that way you can, you can expand the pie so you've got more money to live on to keep up with, with inflation and, and so on and so forth. And, 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 and you're contributing back into the community and so forth and so on. Yeah. yeah, out of interest, what do you personally think is the reason why governments are driving a lot of people to university and trying to get rid of the, those independent, self-sufficient and self-motivated people? Why do you think they would be wanting more people to go to uni and TAFE and all? Yeah, because you just said it. Because normally people that are tradesmen and that and who go through the vet training are self-motivated, self-supporting, you know, have, have a vision for what they want to create. Um, they, they tend to not be um, uh, lefty in nature. Uh, they, they tend to actually have moral values. They tend to have a code that they live by. Where if you have a look at most university students these days, um, they've got no moral code. Um, you, you know, they, they, they don't have an understanding of, of history in the past. You, you, you know, and, and, and a lot of that's because it's just one, it's not being taught to it. Um, and um, and you're just creating a whole heap of basically dumb people. Um, you, you know, um, we got a hundred and this was really really telling. Um, we got 140 applications for a pilot for some pilot positions, um, and we needed out of that out of 140 we needed 30. The uh, and, and the job is fairly specific. You know, you've got to have this, 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 and this. Out of the 140, about 80 didn't qualify, as in they didn't have um, the minimum requirements for the job. So um, that just goes to show you that there's a lot of people out there who are wanting a career in this industry, which is great for us. So we've put all those people on a, um, uh, on, on a wait list and all that sort of stuff and, you know, come back to us when you meet the minimum requirements. Out of the next lot, so out of basically the next 50%, um, we got, um, there was pretty much half of them didn't want to leave the cities. 
uh, they didn't want to come because the, the jobs that we've got are in regional areas. Um, and they didn't want to do that. Out of, out of what then we had, out of the other 50%, so we're now down the quarter of the, of the applicants, uh, about 35 or something, um, 20 of them will get jobs at varying degrees. Some of them are going to go and do training. Some of them are going to go line check. But a big chunk of them didn't have basic life skills, cooking, cleaning, doing their own washing. Um, and, and these are things that we need because these pilots are going to go live on cattle stations. You know, they're going to go live in remote bases uh, working uh, alongside emergency services doing uh, medical evac work. Um, so, it, you know, and some of these people had had come and it was telling the ones, the pilots that had done the university aviation course were the ones that didn't have most of the life skill. The ones that had scraped and scrapped and worked at McDonald's and, you know, done their training hour by hour by hour, they're the ones that had the, the life skills and they're the ones that we ended up in flight, uh, mainly. Um, a couple of, of the university ones we, we employed, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's really, really, really telling. Um, how a big difference is between the, the two streams. So, so that's what I expect from a, a, a Albanese government is basically not a lot. Um, focus on the wrong areas, um, looking to a future of their utopia um, from the born the rural mentality, not a vision of what Australia should be. You know, taking the big risks, you know, uh, telling the rest of the world to no, don't just take our raw materials, take a product um, from us and that sort of stuff. And, and there's none of that vision uh, in the budget at all. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, is Labor still living in the blame game world? Um, you know, one of the lines that you keep hearing is the Liberals left us a billion dollars, a trillion dollars in debt. Well, a third of it was taken over from when Labor were in last time. So that's carryover. Um, the actual trillion dollars doesn't happen and, it's a, and, and that's a gross debt situation or a net debt situation. So that really doesn't happen until 2026, 27, um, if it happens at all. And I reckon with the next line that we're going to talk about, um, the balance of payments that Australia is going to have, that will we'll reduce some of this debt if they don't go and bla bla um, blow it on doing stupid um, green um ideas. Uh, one of the ones that I have seen is, see, so we should be, um, so the coalition put in place uh, a water plan for 23 water infrastructure projects. Um, I'm trying to see it if it's going to come up in the um, in the budget, but apparently Labor's going to get rid of all of them bar two, and they're the two that are just about completed. So, you know, we need that water. You know, during the, the, the situation we're in now, we should be harvesting as much as this flood water as we can so we can irrigate crops and we can, you know, water our lawns, wash our cars um, as we go forward. Water is the lifeblood of this country. You know, you need it for industry. You need it for power generation. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's what it, what's needed. Um, and when I say power generation, real power generation, not that. That, that stupid stuff that they think with unicorn farts and um, and fairy floss. So. Yeah, and Sophie just made a comment, this is crazy, are they trying to destroy Australia? I think that's an understatement, saying it's crazy. Oh, it's insane. Um, and, and it's just, it's going worse. Every time I look up, the, the, at the moment in the budget, he's all about, um, uh, all about the debt and at the moment, there's no black figures coming up. So it's all, it's all pretty negative. Um, but once again, this is what Labor's good at as well, is they're very good at creating a story that's been fo focus grouped within an inch of its life. Um, so those people out there that, um, that basically live in Twitter, Twitter land or headline land, which is most of the, the people in, in in the country because they're trying to get kids to school and go off and jump on the train and go to work. They only ever read the headlines and that. 
that's what Labor are very, very good at. Um, and the Conservatives need to get good at it. Um, but, you know, it's never going to happen. Um, it, it's just... Um, um, yeah, nothing. Oh, that, that's the other one. Six months paid parental leave. Man, that's going to set a lot of businesses broke. A lot of businesses broke. Um, purely and simply because you've got someone away for six months. How do you fill their job with someone temporary? Then when the other person comes back, you've got to tell them to go away. Then they take it at a fair work commission because they've been employed for more than three months and you can't get rid of them. You know, so now you've got to end up hiring two people when you've really probably only got enough work for three quarters. Um, so, I'll, I'll, yeah. So anyway, um, these are the these are the silly things that that that, that are going to come out of the budget. Mm. But, uh, we'll have more next week. I'll, I'll we'll um, we'll do a bit of a roundup of the the headlines of what's coming out. Um, so.